Welcome back to the show. Let's talk to Mr. Jochen Steiger, a CEO for Swiss Resource Capital AG, a man who's flown in today, and I know secretly he supports Crystal Palace. Jochen, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, very much. Um, headline here, supercycle of the battery metals. Everyone's going bananas about this. Is this the new internet? Is this the new boom? I read a very interesting article recently saying that one stock that's got the most exposure in terms of to what's moving us forward is Glencore. Mm -hmm. And it was really quite an interesting read. What's going on? Is this going to happen? Is, yeah. Does it work? This is definitely the next super cycle, I would call it. I'm just off from an uh, important lunch with, uh, with a man who is uh, yeah, responsible for four companies in the cobalt and the lithium uh, sector. Um, but we are also very favorable for lithium, for cobalt, for battery graphite, but also for copper, zinc and nickel, and of course silver because of the silver oxide. But let me put it that way. Um, the e-mobility is something which is unstoppable, that's for sure. And uh, we had worldwide in 2016 two million cars driving on our roads, which were e-vehicles. Yeah? Uh, this year we are already at 3.3 million. And the Center of Automotive Research, one of the most respected uh, research uh, institutes in the world, their prognosis is 9 million cars by 2020 and 75 million e-mobility cars or e-cars e on the roads by 2025. Right. So I give you a simple mathematic. Yep. Take for example, the Volkswagen Golf. Well, I'm German, so we love Volkswagen. But the point is, they, we, we had the ERR in Frankfurt, largest auto fair in the world. And it was very interesting to see the new Golf, beautiful car, consumes approximately 25, maybe 35 kilograms of copper, yeah, depending what equipment you have. The each Golf, the each one Golf, is at approximately the double. Wow. So Okay. Exactly. Uh, in a Tesla, you have eight kilometers of copper wire. Right. This is crazy. And now all the big car makers are stepping into the game. We were all, everybody was talking about Tesla. Honestly, Tesla will be by now the smallest fish in the pond. Um, China is building 10 gigafactories this year and next year. It's the size of the gigafactory of Tesla, 10. Germany starts to build two gigafactories, Bosch and Daimler, for example. So the thing is, when this kicks in, when we have the infrastructure to fast to supercharge everywhere, then you have it in the market completely. And we need at least what Mercedes called it, 500 plus 200. This is their target, 500 kilometer real mileage, real reach, plus 200 kilometers in reserve. And when you have this, then you have the mass market. So we've got to get to 700 kilometres to hit the mass yeah. market. Yeah. But people like Dyson, very famous in the UK for the, um, the Hoover. Yeah. I own two. Okay, <laughs> he's entering, he's got yeah. 200 people working mm -hmm. on the battery. Somebody like that's going to be a winner, isn't he, surely? Or, Absolutely. Or is it that difficult? No, I, wouldn't, I would say if you have the right research team and you have enough money, everybody can do the research on the battery, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, what I really like is, um, I mean, a lithium battery is like a 35-year-old technology. This is not like the rocket science it looks like. The, the art of the science now is that you combine the cells inside and the density of the cells, that you combine this in the perfect way that you get, first of all, many more loading cycles before yep. the battery dies and higher capacity and faster chargeability. Those are the issues which have to be solved. And for example, Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, which is very, very famous also worldwide, or the MIT also in Massachusetts, um, they are very close for the next generation of the batteries. Okay, so my portfolio at the moment is full of Google's, Alphabet's and the likes, um, Amazon's, et cetera, et cetera. Quite risky, I let's, would say. Let's <laughs> close all of my technology securities out and let's mm -hmm. say that I'm going to play the next commodity battery super cycle. Yeah. What stock should I be considering in, on the globe at the moment to make up that portfolio? Well, absolutely lithium producers like Oro Cobre, like SQM, for example, they are interesting. Um, but I would also go into the second row companies like uh, Millennial, which will be in, in Argentina in production in 2020, is absolutely of interest. First cobalt is something I would consider because we have the problem with cobalt. Most of it comes out of the, uh, of the DRC in the yep. Congo. Yeah, so this is 
and secure. Um, Child labour, exactly. bad that's, working practices. Voila, voila. That's, it's, it's a real environmental bad footprint. I mean, you don't want to drive a green car with, when you know that a cobalt is, uh, let's say, is mined under circumstances you even would yeah. not know. Yeah. Yeah. And so for that perspective, I think first cobalt is very interesting because they are consolidating three cobalt companies now in Canada, and they will be maybe the next cobalt producer within the next two, three years, hopefully, from Canada. Okay. So my final question in this segment, okay, which country would you buy into to get this exposure? Who's going to be the winners and who's going to be the losers? Oh, that's hard to say. I would say Argentina is a big winner on the lithium side, like Chile also. Um, the cobalt side, uh, it might be Canada, one of the next interesting companies, right. definitely Australia, because Australia has lithium, nickel and copper. And if we come to the copper side, as I said, copper is for me one of the top metals in this sector, aside of the lithium cobalt technology, um, because we need the copper to make sure that all those cars are working because right. you need to transfer the energy. And also the other thing is uranium. Don't forget about uranium because we need to build a lot more nuclear power plants in the world to get those cars fed in the future. Because by now the anticipation is 76% growth of the world energy demand by 2030. But this was a prognosis done approximately two and a half years ago. So nobody has calculated now the demand of power from all the Teslas and Hyundai's and Toyotas uh, driving now with a battery on our roads. And uh, honestly, we don't have the power by now. So and losers, transmission? Losers? Losers power. Maybe long term losers might be oil. It might be, um, because a lot of people think, okay, when we all drive uh, the, the electric way, yeah. I would call it, then we do not need the oil. So there might be changes, but I think this is a very, very long-term process, at least the next 20 years. Yeah? Because um, try to drive uh, on the electrical vehicle side in India, where you have no infrastructure for loading over 500 kilometers. You need to have a diesel. You need to have petrol, right. because this infrastructure is there. Jochen, run out of time, as always. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.